a round of applause for all of our graduate here today. <laughs> graduate, you may be seated. Everybody else, you may be seated. Welcome to the Governor Thomas Johnson High School 2020 mini graduation. My name is Michael Rossman and I've designed this gradmobile for all the 2020 graduates including my own daughter who graduated from college two weekends ago. Despite all that has changed during this time, we could not let this day pass without you walking across the stage and recognizing your accomplishments. So we have brought the stage to you. This can't replace the real thing. We know that it's better. Yeah. But here in front of your family and those who are filled with pride for you, we wanted you to have this moment. I will now ask everybody to rise, please, for the commencement exercises. Arms out, <laughs> wrist rolls, <laughs> shoulder rolls, and if you're up for it, a few toe touches. Okay, that concludes the commencement exercises. <laughs> I'd now like to read a few words that I have carefully plagiarized from the internet. <laughs> Actually, these words were written by a good friend of mine, a performer named Marianne Jung. Congratulations, graduates. After a long four-year high school career of blood, sweat, and tears, and sleepless nights, whether cramming for exams or out with your friends, you've earned the honor of graduating. You may be wondering, how did I get stuck graduating in the weirdest year ever? I missed out on so much these last months because of the quarantine, and yet this unique time has led you to learn unique lessons, or might we say, meet your final graduation requirements in unprecedented ways. If you were taking history, you might be thinking, what happened two weeks ago, or even two days ago? The days all seem the same. If you were doing geography, you're thinking the borders of my world or my bedroom, the den, the yard, or the grocery store if I'm lucky. If you were doing English, you learned new words you hope to never hear again, like online learning, <laughs> pandemic, quarantine, self-distancing, and the dirtiest words of all, Starbucks is closed and Amazon Prime delivery is now five days. <laughs> if you were doing bio, you're thinking, who is Dr. Fauci? And honestly, how many times a day do I have to wash my hands? If you're doing competitive athletics, you're thinking, no, Nobody cares about Korean baseball. <laughs> if you're doing theater, you're thinking there's no drama like family drama at home. I'll bet you now understand why conflict is the heart of all good theater, even if you wish you had less of it. And no, you cannot get extra credit if you're within two hours of completing Netflix. If you were doing chorus or music, you're thinking, with the Disney sing-alongs on TV, you found out that you actually do know all the words to I'll Make a Man Out of You from Mulan. I do. <laughs> and if you're doing phys ed, you're thinking, no, mom, I will not do another sweating with the oldies or yoga video in the den with you. Seriously, the, although you may wish you had finished school at another time, you really have learned some great lessons that will help you in the future. The first is patience. And this is a tough one. Of course, you want to get out, see friends, go to brunch or go to the gym, but you've learned you can live without those things and find other ways to pass your time. The second lesson you've learned from this pandemic is that life is unpredictable. You will always have to be ready to change courses and try new strategies. While this pandemic may change the course of your career and your education and the path of your life, it won't necessarily be for the worse. It could bring exciting new friendships, chances to learn, career opportunities. Case in point, you're now getting a commencement speech from a professional juggler and tight wire walker. When life gives you lemons, make a graduation mobile. <laughs> Third, look for the positives within the negatives. Your mortar port cap hides your pandemic hair. Fourth, and finally, you've learned that real achievement comes not from big crowds applauding you. Real achievement is all the hard work and effort you've already accomplished. 
the people who love you and have helped you through the years, your family and friends, know how amazing you are and all that you've done. And that includes those that are not here in person, but may be watching on the internet. And finally, step carefully but confidently. The tight wire will hold you up. It's wider than you need it to be. Look straight ahead at the pedestal, your destinations and goals. And even though the walk may be difficult and scary, enjoy the view. The world needs your unique talents and abilities now more than ever. Congratulations, everyone here is incredibly proud of you. And please, another round of applause for Zach. I'd now like to welcome to this podium a distinguished speaker. If I could please invite Principal Miss Lessie. Hi everyone, um, and a very specific hello to Zach, uh, who are you all here celebrating today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Lessie Kosleritch. Uh, I had the very great pleasure of working with Zach when he was a student at the Frost School um, as the leader of the program that he attended. Um, and I couldn't be more honored to be making a speech in his honor uh, for his high school graduation. Um, when I file through all of my memories of those two years working with Zach and his family, um, a one word theme keeps kind of coming to mind and that theme is tenacity. You see, in my experience, when Zach decides something or decides he's gonna do something, uh, you better believe that he is going to drive down every avenue possible to make it happen. And once he's exhausted all his options, is that the end? Nope, <laughs> it's just the beginning. Um, his This determination to try to push himself and also the limits, which sure has caused him some, some challenges. Um, I also see though, this is his his driving force and his greatest strength. Um, it is what drove him to set goals for himself and achieve them at Frost. Uh, it's what drove him to work hard, uh, to move to a new school. It's what drove him to, to sit in my office um, and analyze situations from every angle. Um, and although he didn't always like what I had to say, he always took it in. Um, just kind of always looking to see how he can, he can best reach his goal and he can make his, his goals happen. Um, it's what led him to independently apply and get into college. It's, it's what's going to carry him throughout his life. On the flip side, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the second word that comes to my mind when I file through my Zach memory file. And that word is vulnerability. And please know that I don't mean this in the sense of, you know, something that's, or someone who's kind of defenseless. No, no, no. Um, you see, there's clearly strength in tenacity and determination. Um, but I see perhaps a more solid and lasting strength in being vulnerable. Because being vulnerable is being willing to hold up a mirror and to look at yourself and see the tender spots or the spots that still need softening and to tend to them, to grow them. And that's really, that's the hard work we all have to do, isn't it? And I'm just so happy that in a small way, I got to see Zach do that in his early high school years. Seeing the growth in his ability to sit down with another person, person, <laughs> hear what they had to say, express his own thoughts, his own feelings, and, and being open when he misunderstood or, or was, had a, an issue. And then to see him walk away 
with new knowledge and a more layered understanding of himself and another person. What an amazing thing to be part of that section in someone's journey where they start the work of figuring out why they are the way they are and how they can be their best and truest self. Mm. And now that I've said all these things about you, Zach, I have to say something directly to you, obviously. Um, so here it is. Please never ever forget your strength or your softness. They are both part of you and they are both so important. So protect and cultivate them your whole life. You, you deserve that much effort. If I've learned anything on my own journey, and it's been a lot of things, um, the, the main thing that I always come back to is we all struggle and we all change and we all need and we all strive, but we are all also enough, each of us. We are enough and we are worthy and you are enough and you are worthy. And when we accept all of the different parts of ourselves, no matter what they are, then that's when we, we shine our brightest and when we do our best. You and your family have faced and conquered each challenge that has been laid before you and I have no doubt that that's going to continue. I am I'm just so happy and I'm so proud and I really hope that you are too. And of course, I can't end this without finding a way to bring in Harry Potter. So, I think some of the wisest words that J.K. Rowling through Dumbledore ever said were, it matters not what someone is born, but what they grow to be. It has been a joy to watch you grow on your journey and your journey has only just begun. So all of the congratulations to you, Zach class of 2020 you you did it man it's amazing so happy thank you very much principal leslie <laughs> she was a lot taller when you were younger Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to bring your attention back to the podium as we bring up our second distinguished speaker today. I now wish to invite to the podium, Mike Acker. So this mug has been in our house for a number of years. And it reads, for those of you who can't see from there, believe there is good in the world. Like most kids, when you were little, Zach, you believed that there was only good in the world. You had a spark in your eye, you had a drive in your soul, you would boldly state your future accomplishments you were going to make. I am going to be the president of the Lego company. <laughs> that was one of your big ones. As years went by, you started to see that not everything is good. Not everyone saw things the same way as you. Not everyone thought that you made sense. A lot of things you tried to do did not come easy, and some of them really didn't work out at all. Believe there is good in the world. That belief can sometimes be hard to swallow, but there's more to this saying. Be the good. Zach, that spark that has always been inside of you is because you 
are the good. You have seen that trying to be this or trying to be that doesn't always turn out well because that's not you. There's no shame in being the good, being the kind, being the smart, being the nice kid. A lot of people here today are here because that's the Zach that they see and they know. The teenager who helps entertain their kids, Joel, Jaden, Lincoln. The teenager that those kids can look up to. The boy that will stop and chat with anybody on the street about anything. There's nothing wrong with that. Be the good. That being the good is what you are. That being the good, it is what is going to take you places. You set your sights on New England College in New Hampshire to study media arts. You applied without us even knowing, and you got accepted quickly. You received a tremendous academic scholarship. You did that because that is you. The road ahead is yours to pave. You will be meeting new people. You'll be heading to a new town. You'll be starting a new chapter in your life just a few months from now. Make the most of it. You have overcome some serious obstacles, but you overcame them. We look forward to watching you continue to grow, continue to learn, continue to be your best self. We look forward to seeing how being the good is going to get you farther than working hard to be something you aren't. Believe there is good in the world, Zach, and keep being the good. We love you. We are incredibly proud of you. Your journey is shaping you, and as it's shaping you, it's shaping us. We will always be here for you. We will always have your back and we will always be here to help celebrate your accomplishments. Happy graduation, kid. I love you. And now I would invite the reason why all this is possible, the reason why no great accomplishments can go unnoticed and unspectacularized, un your mom, Maria. Now that you graduated high school, almost, and you're headed off to college, that we're all going to be paying a lot of money for, yep. well, minus the scholarship. We love, we love spending money. What I want to read is something that I think is really true, and this is, all you ever really needed to know, you learned in kindergarten. I don't need to learn English anymore. Please stop making me take it. <laughs> Hold on, Zach. So this is a poem by Robert Fulgram. I'm going to adapt it a little bit. All you really need to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, you learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of graduate school mountain, which hopefully is where you'll be going, but there in a sand pile in elementary school. These are the things that I know you learned and I want to remind you of. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Oh, That's okay. going to mean a lot to your roommate <laughs> when you go to college. Clean up your own mess. That's going to mean a lot to your roommate, too. Hey, I do clean up my messes. <laughs> don't, don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat and after and all in the middle because of COVID. <laughs> Flush. Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. I said it. Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon, but after you go to class. When you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands, stick together. Be aware of wonder and remember when you were little, the little seed in the styrofoam cup, 
The roots go down and the plant goes up and nobody really knows how or why, but we are all like that. Goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even the little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die, so do we. And then remember the Dick and Jane books and the first word you learned, the biggest word of all, look. Everything you know is in there somewhere, the golden rule and love and basic sanitation, ecology and politics and equality and sane living. Take any one of those and extrapolate it into a sophisticated adult term and apply it to your family, life or your work or your government or your world and it holds true and clear and firm. Think what a better world it would be if we all, the whole world, had cookies and milk about three o'clock every afternoon and then laid down with our blankies for a nap. Or if all governments had a basic policy to always put things back where they found them and to clean up their own mess. And it's still true no matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it's best to hold hands and stick together. Zach, we love you. We are so proud of you. You have overcome things that half the people out here don't even know. And for all that, you continue to inspire us and we will always be here for you. So happy graduation. Back to Michael. Back to you, Michael. Thank you. And can we get a nice one more round of applause for Maria after? We're now gonna have the deferring of the diplomas. Sorry, my mistake. We will now have the deferring of the diploma. Please, graduates, rise and wait until your name is called. <laughs> All right, I'll wait back there. We're going to start in alphabetical order. Andy, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Zachary Edward Acker. Thank you. Head back to your seat. Now, just because I believe in entertaining myself, I want you to know that when uh, the actors gave me the empty diploma cardboard dis display, I decided that we would have to call Zachary up here twice. Zachary Edward Acker. Congratulations again. Zachary, remain standing. We're going to have the ceremonial turning of the tassel. Uh, in case you're confused or can't remember whether it goes left to right or right to left, you, if you are confused, you'd be uh, in the same boat as me. But since I realized that this is your graduation, you can do anything you want. You can throw it from one side to the other in any direction you want. We're going to count to three. Ready? And one, two, three. Excellent. If all the graduate will please be seated. I'd like to end with a few closing remarks. Congratulations to the graduates of the class of 2020. As surreal as this has been, we have now guaranteed that you'll never forget this day. The world needs you now more than ever, and we wish you all the best in all of your endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending today, and I wish everybody here a great summer and future. Mm -hmm.